Hey, what's up, YouTube? Grand Stewart here again. Thanks for joining me. I appreciate it. So this is Work Wednesdays. If you're not familiar with my channel, every Wednesday I just kind of do a little vlog telling about my day and what I got going on in the business. So um, yeah, today is Wednesday. <clears throat> I'm getting ready for a trip to Oklahoma City again. I leave tomorrow afternoon, I believe. Um, a lot of people ask me why I always go to Oklahoma City. Well, there's multiple reasons. So I am from there originally, which is why it's our main market. Um, but my kids are there. Uh, they're both in college, sophomore and a junior in college. And um, I have a ton of flips going on all the time and I've got a ton of rental properties. Uh, so I always have reasons, you know, excuses, I guess, is really what it is, just to go. Um, but um, one big time investor is in town and uh, he wanted to take me to lunch on Friday. So I'm going to Friday on, on to lunch with him on Friday. But um, he wanted to take my disposition manager as well, which is weird. But so me and her are both going. Luckily, uh, she lives in Oklahoma City. Well, in that area at least. But um, yeah, so lunch Friday in Oklahoma City with a big time cash buyer. Uh, investor he owns several hundred houses and um, anyways I don't know what he wants to talk about but hey free meal so and you know he's he's at a way bigger level than me so I'm sure we could learn something from him so that'd be cool but anyways um, so not to beat a dead horse but um, we're, we're moved past the other CRM we tried to switch to so fully embracing Podio again. Still trying to get that set up uh, the way we want it. I mean, it was already pretty good, but I don't know why, but I've never had like a phone system implemented like directly in my Podio. I've always used CallRail uh, and ZenCall and things like that, but I've never had a click to call from Podio. Um, and I know people have been doing that for a while. I've just never had it. Uh, so we did implement that for sure. We've got smartphone um, integrated into our Podio now, so that'll make it easier for acquisitions to make calls. Because used to, the way we did it, acquisitions would actually call from ZenCall. So they would log into ZenCall, um, make you know single dials from ZenCall, and then all of our incoming calls would come through ZenCall first, and then uh, you know via call rail and all that to where it, you know, they would answer it live just on their headset when they were logged in um, to ZenCall. But now we've got it all directly coming into Podio, which makes it a little easier in my opinion. So now we're just using ZenCall for cold calling only. We used to use it for acquisitions as well. <clears throat> so now it's just cold calling only. So I think that'll make it easier and it'll definitely be cheaper because ZenCall you pay per seat. Um, and I don't know exactly how it works, but all I know is we end up paying like, I don't know, 470 or so per month for Zincall. And I think that should go down now that I don't have acquisitions and things in there. Um, it's just strictly cold callers now. But I'm not sure how that works exactly. I think it'll go down a little bit, which is cool if it does. And if it doesn't, no big deal. But um, so we've got that working out. And we've got a... Um, we got a flip I just sold. It's actually a, a hotel, basically. Uh, we, there was this house that we had sold a couple times on the retail market um, <clears throat> without owning it, you know, we had it listed. And those deals fell through twice on closing day, so I ended up just buying it myself. Of course, never took it off. Uh, it just got real muddy when it was listed because uh, the seller was, was acting real shady and course the two buyers that we had both backed out the day of closing so it was a long process we had the deal for a long time uh, so I ended up closing on it myself um, about a week and a half ago and you know because I was confident it was a good it was a good deal still so I actually ended up selling it uh, just a couple days later um, and so this time you know when you're doing on the MLS you got to be super specific so because every time we counter with someone on like a hotel deal we counter as if it's like a wholesale even though it's not okay what I mean by that is 
we counter saying, okay, property being sold as is, where is, um, close of escrow within 10 days, we're using our title company, um, seller, which is me, seller will make, make no repairs or, or anything, you know, all those types of things. We, we do all that as if it was a wholesale, even though it's not, because it is distressed property that needs a lot of work. So we just want to make sure that they know what what they're getting into and they can still close fast with cash because it's still a cash deal um, because you can't get a load on those. Anyways, so we did that on both of those two first buyers and they found a way to back out still. And technically I could have held their earnest money because it's plain as day on our counter offer what what they were agreeing to. But we went ahead and refunded the money just because if you don't, then the deal is held up. You can't relist it on the MLS, put it as active again. So long story short, we, we gave the earnest money back on both of them, got them relisted, bought it myself. Uh, so this time, this buyer that we found, um, it's the same deal, cash offer. And um, I'm gonna turn that down because that's the phone ringing. I'm sure my acquisition manager will get it. Um, so it was the same deal, cash offer, but this time I was super, uh, made sure that my disposition manager was super, um, what do you call it, detailed in the counter offer. So this time, not only does it say, you know, it's a cash deal, as is, where is, but it also says, you know, it's 5000 non-refundable earnest money. Before, it just said $5,000 earnest money, close at our place. Of course, you know, this time, anyway, it, it should have been non-refundable anyways, but technicalities. So this time, we spelled it out, clear as day, and we also put in there, um, seller cannot cancel this contract for any reason at all. <laughs> so it's like it's it's dumb proof you know what i mean you, there's no way that they can cancel period so anyways they signed it we didn't think they would because i countered obviously uh way higher because i counted like thirty thousand higher than they offered because obviously they lowballed and i was just hoping like okay well you know we'll meet somewhere in the middle after i first counter but the, well we didn't have to they accepted so um one making like thirty nine thousand on that deal um so that'd be awesome. I'll be out of it, you know, within 30 days because they had to close within 10 actual days and not business days. Um, so they have to close by the 20th. So everything's looking good so far. So anyways, but in the meantime, uh, I'm also hiring a new position. So I've got a new, I, I found a new acquisition manager. It's a, it's a lady that I've been kind of talking to for several months. And we worked together in the past in the Yellow Page industry. And we were good friends, you know, work friends um, back then. Uh, she had awesome work ethic. She uh, ended up going into management, did really good at that. In the last several years, she's worked from home um, on her computer from 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. You know, so even more so, this is like the perfect fit for her and me both. Because, you know, we're 100% virtual. Our team is virtual. Everything about us is virtual. Um, so it's perfect. She's already used to working from home all day, every day, doing sales. Uh, the same type of sales I used to do. Um, except she wasn't selling old pages. It was online stuff because they all merged into that. Which is why I left the industry. Um, anyways. So she's starting on the 20th, which is pretty cool. Which is next Monday. So that's exciting. Uh, but also... I'm adding another position. Um, I'm not sure what to call it yet. It's a, it's basically a lead manager, but they're mostly going to be following up because the main leads, uh, for example, most lead manager people that call, that call them lead managers, um, they handle all the leads and they pass them on to acquisition managers, you know, and, and things like that. They basically vet them to make sure that they're qualified leads. So I'm not going to do that exactly. I still want the hot brand new leads coming to acquisitions because they have the best opportunity to close those deals because they have the best skill set to do that. Um, But this position uh, is more of a follow-up person. Um, So I've got a friend that calls them follow-up specialist, but they're kind of lead managers as well. So either way, that's the position I'm hiring. So what they're going to be doing is in my podio, I've got tons and tons of old leads, not tons, but Uh, you know, a few thousand old leads that we just kind of threw to the wayside that we gave up on for whatever reason. Um, So their their job is going to be actually getting on the dialer. So that's one cool thing that I added into my podio 
smartphone has a dialer too. So they'd be getting on the dialer, calling all those older leads. They weren't necessarily bad. They just didn't work at the time for whatever reason. Uh, so it could have been timing. Um, maybe they wanted retail. You know, uh, retail back then, if their number is still the same, could work today because the market's so hot. You never know. So anyways, that person's job will be cold calling all day long, um, passing those off to acquisitions because now I'll have two acquisitions again. Thank goodness because that's what I need. Um, so their job will be passing those to acquisitions. And then obviously if they tee it up, acquisitions is the one closing it. So their job is just going to be basically nurturing these leads, following up with these leads all day, every day. Now, don't get me wrong, my acquisition managers still have their queues to where, um, like for example, I have a hot leads queue, which are basically all the leads that we think we will be able to get contracts on within the next 30 days, or it's brand new leads coming in, okay? But uh, if it's a brand new lead, they have to actually move that into, you know, a different lead status right away. Uh, it can't just stay in valid is what we call them because we know it's a valid lead it came into our system because even to get into our system you gotta uh, it's got to come through like directly from radio uh, directly from a cold caller that vets them out it's not somebody that just raises their hand but it's someone who actually wants to sell their property typically um, even RVMs they have to be they go through a little process before they even make it into our podio same with SMS um, we've got people running the SMS to where they won't even send it into our podio until it's actually qualified. So anyways, acquisition is going to have their fair share of follow-up too because they have a short-term follow-up that they're responsible for as well. Um, so that's you know a few hundred leads by itself. So when they're not working on their hot leads trying to get those deals, they're actually going into their short-term kind of follow-up nurture leads. Um, so they have a few hundred of those. But then those, those long-term ones, the ones that we kind of gave up on, that's the one that my follow-up specialist or lead manager is going to start handling and they'll pass those off to acquisitions to, the, to just close. So the lead manager will get, um, you know, 5% of the commission that acquisitions would have gotten and acquisitions won't get that because all they're literally going to do on those particular leads is just have to close them. That's the whole point of that. So anyways, we'll see how that goes. I'll keep you all updated on that. Uh, it's, it's a new thing I've, I'm testing now. A friend of mine does it. She does it a little bit different. Um, but she does it similar. But, um, you know, you, you always got to fit things to mold your particular business. Um, I definitely don't believe in uh, reinventing the wheel. You know, everything that we do, we pretty much learn somewhere from someone, typically. Uh, and then you just kind of mold it to fit your business needs and how you want to run things. So really, that's that's what I'm doing. So I'm excited. I'm getting a new employee. Actually, that follow-up specialist is starting soon as well. I'm making some changes in my podio before that happens just to make sure that that runs smoothly. I've got to have fields uh, for that new person uh, and to be able to pass those off to the acquisition. So we've got to make all that work in podio first before I add her. But the new acquisition manager is starting the 20th. Um, and then my follow-up specialist, she's already on board um, ready to go so hopefully I'm hoping to hire her uh, you know at the latest you know early October hoping by the end of September but we'll see how that goes so anyways that's really it guys um, that's kind of what I'm working on today um, working with my developer on getting Podio going still uh, I gotta gotta make some new SOPs for this new position since it's new uh, if you don't know what SOPs are that's standard operating procedures um, I've got all the SOPs in every workspace in Podio for each position. So it's really just plug and play. Uh, my system trains them. Obviously, I'll go over one-on-one, uh, -on -one, you know, detail work with them to kind of get them up to speed. But for the most part, my system uh, trains them because I have all these SOPs um, lined out for every position uh, within the workspace in Podio. Uh, it's literally a whole description of what that particular duty is typically have a PDF kind of explaining then the workflow of that and then I usually have a, at least a video or two of each one of those as well explaining exactly what to do so obviously there's a lot of moving parts in this business that's the the best way that I've found to to actually train people so 
um, cause you're training at once, record what you're doing and then you can keep training people just through video and things like that. So anyways, thanks guys for watching. Uh, sorry I rambled on a little bit at the end, but, um, super excited for the new employee, super excited that we've got this, uh, podio stuff, uh, coming back into play, you know, at a higher level, even than before. And, uh, really thankful that we've got a couple of flips. Uh, closing soon of course wholesale deals closing as well so anyways guys keep grinding keep hustling keep watching my videos to learn more and i'll see you in the next video